what I'm talking to clients about right now is there's three specific areas that we got to get really, really good at. I'm not talking good as a real estate agent, but good as a business person. I think that's the biggest difference. Today, you've got to be a business person. You cannot be a real estate agent. Real estate agents don't make the kind of money they should. Business people do. So if we approach it from a business perspective in three categories, lead generation, lead conversion, and presentation skills. It has to go to a higher level of skill for all those three areas. That has to be the foundation today because it's, it's really going to take more of that individual to be good in those areas. But here, what's, what's really cool is that if you are really working on those areas at a higher level starting today, even if you've been in business for six months, a year, you're going to be in it for a long time. I agree. I feel that a lot of ages need to see themselves as business owners. Because at the end of the day, if we're not putting deals together, if we're not getting contracts signed, we're not getting paid, unfortunately. And yeah. skills pay the bills. I like to say that. If you're not working like on that. them, you're, you're probably falling behind. It's social media is a good thing, but it's a bad thing if you think that's what you got to do first without having mm -hmm. lead generation, lead conversion, and presentation skills down. You're distracted. Welcome to Vulcan 7 Coaches and Mentors, a show where we interview coaches and mentors all over the country and they share with us their tips and strategies so that you can succeed as a real estate agent. If you know of anyone that might be a good fit for this show, reach out to us. We would love to have them on. Without further ado, I would love to introduce you to today's guest, Bill Crespo. So for anyone that's watching that maybe doesn't know who you are, go ahead and share with us maybe like in 30 seconds, a little bit about you. I was born a small child. No, I'm just kidding. So anyway, I uh, been in the real estate business for 38 years. This is my 38th year in the business. I was a uh, Mike Ferry coach for a long time, was with MAPS Coaching, I had my own franchise, I uh, was a corporate person for Century 21. So I've been around for a long time. My market is uh, in Virginia and... Um, that's where I've been. So I, I, I coach teams and I have my own team here in Virginia Beach. Awesome. Awesome. Yep. So in this show, you know, we want to feature coaches and mentors. You've been in the business for a long time. Um, I know that the market has changed. You've gone through so many different markets in your time. So can you share with us kind of like what you're seeing or what you're sharing with the agents right now to prepare you know, whether they're working with buyers or sellers or how to gain momentum if they feel like they're getting stuck. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? It's, it's so interesting because um, this is going to be a little version of 2008, 2009, 10, all that time. It's another version of this. And I think what's happened right now that it got really easy for a while to do the business. And now we're going back to high level skills. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that what I'm talking to clients about right now is there's three specific areas that we got to get really, really good at and not good at, and this is going to be pretty bad because I'm a coach. Uh, I'm not talking good as a real estate agent, but good as a business person. I think that's the biggest difference today. You've got to be a business person. You cannot be a real estate agent. Real estate agents don't make the kind of money they should. Business people do. So if we approach it from a business perspective in three categories, lead generation, lead conversion and presentation skills. It has to go to a higher level of skill for all those three areas. That has to be the foundation today because it's, it's really, it's really going to take more of that individual to be good in those areas. But here, what's, what's really cool is that if you are really working on those areas at a higher level starting today, um, even if you've been in business for six months, a year, you're going to be in it for a long time. I asked the guy the other day, I said, what is your commitment level? And we went over a scale of one to 10 in each one of these categories. And his, his total score was pretty low, but his heart and his desire to make a change is big. And I think that's necessary today. You've got to want to play big in this, in this arena because it's not the same market and it will not be for a while. Yeah, absolutely. No, I agree. I feel that a lot of ages need to see themselves as business owners because at the end of the day, you know, if we're not putting deals together, if we're not getting contracts signed, we're not getting paid, unfortunately. And yeah, yeah skills, skills pay the bills. I like to say that if you're not working like on that. them, you're, you're probably falling behind. Yeah. And I think the skills that we, we tend to forget that we are, we have to have high ticket selling skills, mm -hmm. uh, uh, not, you're not selling a 
you know, uh, a paper route. You're not selling Mary Kay. You're selling a high ticket item, which means you got to have high ticket level skills. I think that, and think about this over the years, a lot of these people that used to train this um, are no longer living because we got into social media so much Mm -hmm. that we lost the ability to communicate at a higher level and understand uh, what goes on in the in the behavior of the other person on the other end because we tend to talk when we're nervous we tend to talk too much yep and then we we repel that person on the other end of the conversation so there are some basic things that i think mistakes that are being made right now with agents off of some scripts that are out there today that are putting people into fight or flight and that's what we got to be careful of mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'm glad that you were bringing up social media because I see it a lot as well, um, where agents would rather, you know, create videos or dance on TikTok and try to generate leads that way. And at the end of the day, you know, the way that I built my business was cold calling expires for sale by owners and door knocking. And I feel that all of the skills that I gained by doing that, anyone that's just focusing on social media, we're at a completely different skill set and being able to communicate and convert, you know, potential clients. It's social media is a good thing, but it's a bad thing if you think that's what you got to do first without having lead mm-hmm. generation, lead conversion, and presentation skills down. It's just you're you're distracted. I was talking to a lady today, and I just said, just stay away from it for at least six months. Get your fundamentals down to a higher level. Rate yourself in these areas because, uh, and and again, I'm I've seen this in several industries. I used to sell franchises prior to real estate. I had my own marketing company at one time. So before I got into real estate, I got this this exposure to corporate selling, not real estate selling. And the mistake that's being made now, most of the training is based on real estate fundamentals. It's not going to help you. You've got to get a higher level skill of communication, all these other things. And uh, Vulcan 7, and I, I, this is my little brief commercial, in the old days... But I almost, you know, I, I, I'm that guy now that I got to go in the old days. But um, this is a, a gift to be able to sit there and press one finger on a button and get these phone numbers to come out. And when I see people not applying themselves on a regular basis to digging deep and getting these calls made, I mean, I, I hear, well, there's nobody home. There's someone home, I guarantee you. It may take more contacts, but there are people home, people answer, and I'm doing it because I'm building my team up here and I'm the best prospector. And I've been, I have taught power prospecting for 10 years around the country where people were in my classroom for two days, and some of you might have been in that class, and, and I'm watching them prospect and coaching them live. And I can tell you that people are home. You just got to stay with it, and sometimes we just – get disappointed and we get distracted and we get bummed out because it's not working, but you got to stick with it. And that's, that's a business, as you said, Lloyd, it's, it's a business mindset Mm -hmm. because business people don't just give up. They stick with it. Exactly. And it might take time. You'll get discouraged for some, you know, cold calling is probably not fun, but I know, for example, when he went with me, when I would do it, it was like that next person is going to be that one that needs my help. And I think it's also a lot about mindset. You really have to think of yourself as that agent that needs to help that homeowner. Um, Another thing that I would tell myself is that if it's not me making the calls or setting these appointments, there might be a really bad agent that doesn't know what they're doing that's getting those listings. So why not it be me? So that's just my tip. (laughs) Yeah, no, I think that's great. You know, and because you've done this for a while, I've done it for a long time, but it's funny how our brain works. So you'll be making these calls and all of a sudden you look at a phone number and you go, or you look at a phone, you, you actually know the personality style of the person that you don't even have any talk to them yet. And all these little, little, little negative thoughts go in your head. You look at a, a price mm-hmm. on expired that has another couple zeros and you start getting freaked out. They're just people. You just exactly. got to keep calling. And uh, who was I talking to? It was Chris Heller who was talking to me. Uh, I interviewed him a month ago on our show. And he was saying your second thought is the, is the thought you got to control. Mm-hmm. Think about it. So you got a prospect, you got to make the call. All of a sudden you start thinking, oh my gosh, they're going to think I'm in disrupting them. Oh, what if I'm calling at the wrong time? Forget it. Just make the calls because you've got to put your family first. You've got to put your bills first. You can't put some stranger first. And, some, and you're going to see this, Lord, and this is something that's interesting. 
you're going to see a lot of people having to change direction in the next 90 days dramatically who you thought was doing really well mm -hmm. because it's so easy to do well when things are easy. Exactly. It's now the people with the skills and with the tools that we have here at Vulcan. I mean, you, you've got to use it. I can't imagine not using these things. So it, it is going to be something really interesting, uh, but I think it's, it's necessary so that we, that we actually now start showing people that we're worth the money that they're paying and I, that you or me or whoever has a higher skills than the next person. Exactly. And it has to be demonstrated. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I know that there's a lot of agents out there that have probably gone after buyers or it has been easier to work with buyers, but now they want to start to transition to getting listings. What would you say would be the first step to whether it's getting on that mindset of being a listing agent to actually getting listings and generating those type of leads? First, take a breath. <laughs> breathe because you start getting palpitations, right? Oh my gosh, you know, I'm dealing with buyers. You know, I, I, first of all, I think one thing that we're not doing enough of is let's look at the stats. If you want to sell 50 deals, 25 deals, 36 deals, hundred deals, I guarantee you in a market, there are those deals available for you. So we tend not to look at the stats. So our brain goes into, oh my gosh, there's nothing going out there. There's no expires, there's no FISBOs. And, you know, you can see here with with Vulcan, they're there, but I think we're not understanding the stats. I looked at my stats and what's exciting about the stats, you're seeing a merger of what the list price to sale price is. So there's some grass that you start seeing the lines converge, meaning that what it's listed for, they're going to get, or maybe a little bit less. So there is an opportunity and you've got to believe in yourself and you got to believe that whoever owns the inventory really owns it. I mean, they're not buying tents. When the market shifts, they're not buying campers. <laughs> they're buying houses. So who's going to who's going to own that house? You should have that inventory. Uh, I can't imagine. First of all, I don't like taking buyers. I don't know how, how were you? Were you like taking buyers around? Uh, I'd rather focus on listings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, you know, they wreck my car. You know, they do stuff. I don't want people in my car. Yeah. So I, I, I just want to be able to deal because I had a family, I had six kids. So uh, every house was important for me to sell, but for me to leverage my time, I had to have listings mm -hmm. because listings will give me the time I needed. So I didn't have to work crazy hours. And I typically right now I'm, I'm a probably a nine to six, nine to five type of person because I'm making the calls on a regular basis. I'm setting up the previews and uh, going out to see these houses, but the buyer agents just have to know you got to have more confidence in yourself. And I think the other thing is not to over rapport. I think a buyer agent tends to want to over rapport with people. And then people start to not have that credibility. They don't need a best friend. They don't need a family member. They need a consultant. And once you move over to the listing side of it, they will need your help in this marketplace. So you got to study it. So you're not over rapporting and just wanting a hug and a kiss with someone. You got to tell them that you know something. And I think you have to study the market. Yeah, exactly. I think I also hear it a lot of times that agents, they'd rather go after buyers because it's easier. And look, it might be easier, but you're spending a lot of time, a lot of weekends, a lot of offers that don't get accepted. And for me, I'd rather focus on something, even if it's harder, even if it's tougher, you know, get those skills up to the point that you, you'll get much better at converting and objection handling and setting appointments and getting contracts signed with business. Yeah, or you become a glorified Uber driver. <laughs> exactly. Yes. I mean, you know, you might as well just get an Uber driver job and, and because it's sometimes it's like that with people, you know, they're driving. They can't wait. See, human nature is going to take advantage of us in some cases. I mean, I know that we want to service these people, but I think we've got to overqualify them for their motivation, overqualify them. Um, and we talk about asking the question, are you ready to be competitive in this marketplace? Mm -hmm. Because if you're not, you're just wasting your time. So I think um, I have a team out in New Jersey that I'm coaching. We talked about this last week is that you just can't get in your car first. You've got to ask some specific questions. I think sometimes we're afraid to ask the money question mm -hmm. because we're afraid to get offended. If you've been in the business more than a year, or less than six months or more, you've been offended by someone lying to you in real estate, or maybe they intentionally lie, but 
the situation wasn't exactly what they said it was. So we're going to have to get used to, in my opinion, asking specific questions because that's what a consultant does. If you go to a dentist, you go to a doctor, you go to an attorney, they're going to ask specific questions on situations to make sure that they understand you. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how real estate people who can make as much money as those people don't get better asking the tough questions. And I think that's maybe that jump from a buyer's agent to a listing agent is that you're going to have to now ask specific questions. And even a buyer, I wouldn't put a buyer in my car unless I knew that they're ready to do something in a short amount of time because uh, I don't like being an Uber driver. <laughs> No, exactly. No, no, I know exactly what you mean. And I think it's really important for everyone to know you have to ask very specific questions. You have to ask a lot of questions. You have to get the motivation um, because I hate to have my time wasted. I don't want to waste anybody else's time. There's been plenty of clients that have wasted my time. So I've learned from my experience. I know, Bill, you probably have as well that we're like, you know what? If it's not meant to be, they can go find somebody else, but you're not going to waste my time. Yeah, c'est la vie, you know, because... Uh... And I call them bloody noses. You know how you, you let me give it one more chance and uh, take them out. And then all of a sudden you go, I oh, cannot believe I just did that because I gave them a chance. And mm -hmm. then they end up, and, and the buyer agents that are not getting people under the agreements up front to me is a complete waste of time also. So I think that, you know, that's back to the skills. We've okay. got to make sure that we've got the right, even going out to a listing right now, um, you know, I'm a big fan of, getting out to preview for sale by owners, even expires. And um, there's some mistakes that are being made right now that are turning people off from the agents. Uh, we have to sound different. You know, in the, in the older days, there weren't as many people calling. Now a lot of people are. So how do we separate ourselves? Your tonality, how do you ask questions? Is it open-ended? Is it closed-ended? Is it alternate choice? There's so many deeper sales behavior, things that we've got to understand. And it's, it's not a mystery. You just got to study it. You know, um, couple, probably one of the better books I've read in a long time uh, about questions was The Seven Powers of Questions by Dorothy Leeds, L-E-E-D-S. And she talks about how to use questions with certain types of people. Because, you know, also don't, I'm a driver, so I don't want to be at the house forever. You know, as soon as you get the, as soon as you ever done that, you get the listing, you jump, boom. You're there for an hour. You're talking. As soon as they sign, pew, you're gone. Right? Yeah. You, you just worked it. But I think there's certain questions that we have to ask to make people feel comfortable to talk to us so that they give us the truth and not be in a fight or flight demeanor where they're just guarded. They've got to drop their guard. And that's the skill that's necessary. And that's what buyers, agents, and listing agents have mm -hmm. to learn right now, in my opinion. Yeah. I know that you brought up previewing for sale by owners and expired. Can you share with us a little bit more about that? Because maybe that's something that some agents can start doing right now. Yeah, I think um, the previews and for FISBOs and expires are an important, especially new agents coming in and anybody. I mean, I do it still. So what ends up happening is we're trying to close people over the phone. And what happens is it's you're setting yourself up for rejection very quickly. And then you keep following up, following up, following up. So what, being face to face as quickly as possible is going to give you the edge on the potential lead. So how can we do that? So if we bring up, hey, I want to list your house. I want to talk to you about what I can do. They're going to get in a defensive posture. So by previewing the property we're able to at least get in the property. Now, if they ask you, do you have a buyer? And this is a mistake that some of the agents have been doing. Well, I don't, I'm not sure I gotta see your place. Just say no, if you, don't, if you do have one, just say yes. But if you don't have one, don't say, say no, I don't have one right now, but I always have different buyers coming in at any given time. When's a good time for me to stop by and see you for 15 or 20 minutes? Once you're in the house, you can uncover information. But what happens with the scripts today, we're getting ourselves in, in the beginning, asking too many deep, questions that put people into fight or flight and then they ghost you or they don't want to talk to you or they say no and then we can't get in the house i think our job is to get into that home as quickly as possible let them see you let them know that you're just a nice lady a nice man that has a family that's looking to help them they need to see that because they've got an ugly picture of us if they don't see our face exactly it's, you know and if you don't have good tonality it's going to mm -hmm. even be harder so previews um it's it, the conversion rate. Let, let's look at the worst case here. 
If you go to a house and they never list with you, you now are out in the marketplace. You're meeting people, you're practicing your skill, and you're getting to know the marketplace and what's happening in the change of the marketplace. Now, if you do go to one every day, you'll probably get two to three listings a month, almost guaranteed if you have halfway decent skills. Mm -hmm. But what we're doing, we're staying in our office all day long, calling, 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 and we're not getting out. So, and because we're too abrupt in our scripting. Now, that's my philosophy. I know there's other philosophies out there, which is fine. Um, but I think in general is, can we go face-to-face -face as quickly as possible? That's the key. Once we're face-to-face, -face, we're eye-to-eye, -eye, people see us, and now they know a little bit more about us, and we're developing some rapport and then finding out their motivation for selling and then finding out they meet you. And then when they get to the point, because it's happening right now where these FISBOs are not selling, the expires have the wrong price, they now go to look at someone that looked professional, that they can relate to, that had a good demeanor, and make you one of the two or three people that they interview, which now brings us back to having an awesome presentation, because if you don't, you lose. Yeah. And I think that also makes you stand out as well, because it's very rare that agents will actually show up or go in person. So let's say that the seller's not ready then. Now it's just a matter of keeping in touch and checking back in and, you know, staying top of mind. Otherwise, if a better agent that has more skills comes in, they might now take that business. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, just get out of your office as quickly as possible. Meet people. We've got to get out. Um, the COVID thing really changed a lot of people. They think they can do everything at the office now. We are a people business. And the more that we get out and meet the people at their homes, even. Now, I went to one yesterday, beautiful home, and they were priced low, a FISBO. Mm -hmm. And this is when you do it. Uh, and let me just go back to previews. Before I go out to a preview, I've done a one line CMA. I have some idea are they in range or not in range? So in this case yesterday, I had to let them know that, um, you know, they could have got a little bit more money. And um, it's so funny how um, the owners believe they've got it right. When I know that I've been in business longer than they, but I didn't make them, you know, I didn't say you're stupid, you got it all wrong. <laughs> yeah. I mean, or if I lose the whole deal, but I'm saying to them is, you know, I, let me just show you the evidence that I've seen. And there was some really good evidence that they could have got another Ten to fifteen thousand dollars after paying commissions, you don't know that, and they won't believe you until you get eye to eye, belly to belly, mm -hmm. and see them in person because they have they don't trust you. You're just another agent. You're like everybody else trying to get a listing, and um, it, it's there. There are deals out there right now that you are missing. I'm missing because we're not out there in front of those people, and we've got to get out there faster now because as we're coming into June. We're going through third quarter and into fourth quarter. You're going to see a dramatic change in the marketplace. We're seeing indications right now of it all over the country. And so um, getting out. But if you're a driver personality like I am uh, without skill, you're going to lose patience and you want to close hard on the phone. You get rejected. Someone goes to the house, knocks on the door, gets really nice and friendly. You just watch yourself deal. <laughs> It's very important for agents to be able to understand the different personalities. So just like yourself, the driver, the expressive, the amiable, like you need to be very good at knowing what type of person you're talking to, because if you guys are off, you're going to lose that person. They're not going to even want to work with you or even want to hear you talk. Yeah. I always say that uh, you do not work well all day long being you. Mm -hmm. you get, I can't be me all day long. I got to be me the amiable, me, the driver, me, yeah. the expressive, me, the analytical. And I have to adjust because if we are a personality and we typically handle well with two personalities, one a little challenging and the other one for sure, you have a complete problem with. And if you're not versatile enough to pick up nuances in their voice and their, their uh, body language, um, you're losing some money. And that's what I was saying. The skills that we need to have right now are beyond what we mm -hmm. thought we needed because Agents are leaving the business. There's not enough inventory out there. There's not enough deals so that every opportunity is so important that we present ourselves at the highest level possible. And that's knowing what you said, Lloyd, the, the, the personality styles. What are the clues? What are the cues? Um, and there's some really good books on that, too. Yes. Now, before we wrap it up, I want to hear more about the coaching that you have. So tell us more about that. Well, um, I don't babysit. 
Good. <laughs> uh, and uh, I don't change diapers. So if, if agents are looking to grow quickly and move, um, I that's the kind of I work with teams, but I'm more a specialist. I'm not a big company that, you know, we're going to have all these numbers. I need people that are really ready to run hard and want to make a massive change. And I'm working with those type of people. I've uh, worked with teams that were doing 2000 deals a year to 400 deals a year to agents that really want to get things moving. So if they need to learn more about it, I'll be willing to just talk for a little bit just to see if there's a, a fit because the last thing I want to do is bring someone on that I can't really achieve the goals that they want. So they can reach me at uh, path to procoaching.com. Okay. Awesome. So path to yep. procoaching.com. Is that the best way to get a hold of you as well? Or is there any, any other? Uh, they can email me at BC, B as in boy, C as in cat at path, P A T H and number two pro uh, dot net. And they can reach me there. They can look up my name on internet. Um, so I, I've done a, I just recently did a five day challenge for people. So um, I'm, I'm more of a specialist. I, f I focus on three things only uh, and then building teams around those three things, lead generation, lead conversion and presentation skills. That's my forte. I've studied it for a very long time. So if anybody wants marketing, I have a, a marketing, uh, actually I have a marketing team, believe it or not, in South Africa that does all my digital marketing and helps my clients with their marketing. So Tanya is, is the pro there and she can help develop the, um, the brand under a digital format so that we don't lose the deal. So, and we actually build more clientele. So it's, it's, uh, it's a process, but we're more of a boutique operation. Oh, that's amazing. And then you also have a YouTube yep. channel too as well, right? Yeah, I got Path to Pro Coaching, uh, Path to Pro TV. There you um, go. <laughs> um, my, and we have Path to Pro Radio, which is we've interviewed some of the top. Chris Heller was on just recently. We have a bunch of different ways to communicate. I think uh, what I just want to show is that I, I, I'm i a little bit different than most. If you're with me, we're going to work. We're going to make it happen. Um, I, I don't want to, uh, as I said, uh, be more excited about your business Exactly. Than, uh, than you are. So I, I want to be able to pick you up, take you uh, and where you want to go, but we're ready to run hard uh, on some fundamentals to take you to the next level. There you go. Yep. So path to pro pretty much everywhere. Path to pro you'll find Bill. <laughs> That's right. Anywhere you want. And Say habla español. Oh, even better. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Well, Bill, thank you so much for joining us today for Vulcan 7 Coaches and Mentors. We'll make sure to include all of your links in the description box below. And for those of you that are watching, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. See ya.